There has been a plethora of follow focus units, fizz units in particularly, on the market in the last couple of years, but today we have a new kid on the block. DJI is not sponsoring this video, however, they were kind enough to loan this unit to me for the last two months or so to make this video as well as test it out in my various projects I'm using. So I did put it on a commercial I shot in San Diego with Niles. Do, 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 do one more time. So let me give you a little bit more context and the perspective I'm going to take when reviewing this particular unit. A few months ago, I had mentioned that I want to explore more of the AC route when it comes to the film production and crew and things like that. My skill set really does lie in that particular job role, I guess you can say. And since then, I've been looking at different fins units. I've bought a few things. I've tried out the different things to find the best value and features for the price that is, which brings us here today in this review, which gives me another opportunity to test out something that's going to be a very vital tool in any AC's uh, toolkit is the focus unit, the fizz unit, focus iris and zoom. So that's where we're going to kind of explore. And that's where my talking points are going to kind of come from. I will be comparing this unit, the Focus Pro, to my PD Movie Pro, so we can get a little bit of a you know comparison going on there so we can understand where DJI is going with this and who is this really for. Simply, this system is very easy to set up. It's literally plug and play, a quick calibration, and then you are rolling, which is pretty much the DJI fashion. It's very well integrated, it's very well polished, uh, straightforward, not a lot of digging into menus, and the same goes for this unit here. The hand unit itself goes for $950 US, and then the motors go for $150 per motor. So if you had three motors, that's about $450 because you want to get the Fizz, uh, the Fizz unit, so Focus, Iris, and Zoom. And then um, you pay for that. That's roughly, you know, $14-ish, $100, give or take USD, which is very competitive in my opinion. The first thing I'm going to do, what I've learned from using this system, is that I'm a plug-in power first, so using the DTAP to USB-C, then I'm going to plug it into my first motor because I think that becomes your master. Whatever motor that's plugged into power directly, that is your master and everything else follows after that. So let's plug that in. Now to my knowledge, these are new motors and they have quite a bit of torque. There's finally a 15 mil rod clamp on the motors. Before you had, I think it was 12 mil. Oh. That's a very welcome change. I've already had it set up to F, so it's gonna be flashing this red light. But in this time, you can actually decide where you wanna go for each motor. So you have F for focus, press once, I for iris, press again, and then Z for zoom. But again, we're gonna put this on focus. I'm gonna flip this around real quick. This camera's too big for this tripod. And same thing over here is already focused on I, so I'm gonna just cycle through again, see how easy it is. And then, boom, tighten that down. So once that's all ready, Get my hand unit here and press the red button. Um, already it's turned green because it's going to remember the calibration, especially for each lens. But in this case, I'm going to unlink it real quick. So I'm going to press and hold the M button and that will turn yellow. So you have green, yellow, and red. And then now the fizz unit is flashing red. So in order for me to pair it, I'm going to just press and hold the first motor, which is going to be my focus motor and that's powered. Press and hold it and then it's gonna turn green. Now I can calibrate the rest of the motors. So if I press and hold the trigger and the M button, it's going to calibrate all the motors here. Though the second motor is a solid red, you can see it's still being communicated because it's acting like a slave in this case. And now I have control over focus and my iris. Bada bing, bada boom. Very straightforward. Okay, before moving on to the hand unit, let me address the elephant in the room, the USB-C ports. Comparing it to my PD movie and any and all really fizz units, the standard is using a, a two pin limo or I believe a five pin limo in some cases. If you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a standardized connecting point that's really secure because it locks itself into the port. It kind of recesses in it and it locks it. So that way if somebody comes across, you don't yank it out. It's 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 pretty much the standard. That's what I'm used to. It's, it's a lot more secure port than anything else. 
I say that because the DJI system for the motors is using USB-C. And it's not even using, using a recessed USB-C where you plug it in and it's kind of like into the motor. It's sticking out. And this is problematic on professional sets, especially when there's a lot of hands on the camera possibly, or just a lot of moving around. Um, this can get kind of worrisome and troublesome where it can kind of pull and yank it out and then you lost your shot or what have you. Whatever the situation may be, it's just not a secure um, solution. My next comment is on the motors itself. Though they're already long and tall, there is no height adjustment for it. So for instance, if you have a smaller lens and you have greater distance between your, your rails and the lens itself, you want something that has a height adjustment to kind of reach it and get it to a decent position to pull that focus ring. Uh, with this, you're, it's a fixed position. And this makes sense if you're on a gimbal, you have that short stubby motor that you know stays a lot closer to those smaller lenses and cameras. But if you're on a, you know, a much more heavy duty production rig, um, it can vary. So I wish there was a little bit of a height adjustment. As you can see here with my PD Movies motor, it actually has a height adjustment here. Now the Focus Pro hand unit takes cues from an all-in-one form factor, similar to the Inspire One's hand unit. The difference being is that you, now you have a dedicated record button on a unit as well as a mini screen. Other units that are similar to this are the Movecam MCS-1, the Aria Hi-5, and the Preston Hand Unit 4 in terms of design. Yes, the screens are much larger, but you get the point. Simple layout, like I said earlier, it's very traditional in the sense it's an all-in-one system. So you have your zoom rocker here. If you press this, you would think there's a lot of travel. There's not a lot of travel. That's how most of them are. This is enough for the zoom. Um, here's your iris slider and then your focus wheel, of course. This does light up, and I can show you how that does, but the wheel can light up, and then this here can light up, and again, you can use a dry eraser marker here to uh, measure or map out your T-stops. Of course, record button, your M button, and A and B points. It's a really simple A and B point system here. On the back end, you have a single button, which is the trigger button, and in conjunction, once you hold that down, you see this is actually a quick way to get to your stiffness for your uh, focus wheel here. So you can say I want it less stiff or more stiff and then you can change it on the fly there. Now the build quality is quite plasticky. Is that a word? <laughs> but it's very lightweight. Just don't drop it. As you can see here in the menu on the screen here you can see a percentage. It's interesting they did percentage versus like infinity to you know, the close focus. So there's really no mapping. This is the only way you can tell that there's mapping from the screen is by percentage. Maybe that can change in the future. That'd be quite, that'd be more useful than a percentage in my opinion, but I digress. Um, you can see your battery and then Bluetooth and then um, manual control if you switch back and forth. So I'm guessing that's for when you're using it with the Ronin 4D that is. So if we get into the menu, swipe down, you have your Bluetooth. Maybe it connects to Sony, Panasonic. I don't know yet. I don't know what the Bluetooth is actually for, but you can connect it to the app and see what other cameras I guess you can connect to. Motor calibration. We already went through that. Linking motors there. This is the motor stiffness for the focus motors here. And you would like to have this adjustment. I wish it was a little bit more fine tuned, but high and low. So if you have a lens that already has a very smooth and loose focus or the iris or zoom, you can change, you can select how you want the motors to react. I wish you can do it for each one individually, but you know, I'm asking for a lot. <laughs> focus knob, which is this again, I showed you the shortcut how to get through that, but you can do it here in the menu as well. Um, you can invert all the buttons if you wanted to. The M button, functionality there. You can decide what you want to do, AF, AF on, AF off. And then I don't know what AMF is, but there's your options there. Swap back over, you have backlight. So you get into the backlight and now if you turn it on, there's no adjustments, it's either just on or off. There's no dimming or anything like that. And then your general settings. I wish the screen was a little bit bigger so it can just be about this size here and move everything down um, that would have been nice or just make this unit a little bit bigger but it is what it is another question mark i have is the the run stop capabilities of this unit with third-party cameras obviously you can use this for the ronin 4d this will communicate and be fine you know you can start and stop um, recording from a distance and do that and the other that makes sense but can this work with other third-party cameras? Can it work with my Kinfinity? Uh, can it work with Ari, Sony? You know, you name it. 
At this point, I don't know that answer. Um, it would need, I would believe, software capabilities as well as that the right connecting point, USB-C to a run-stop cable, which is like a three pin on my camera at least. So that's a question mark because I would rather have that ease of use to start and stop from my position as being the focus puller versus it, you know, doing it from the camera. This was really fun to use while on the commercial. Um, we did a couple of crash zooms with an undisclosed lens, I cannot say, um, but this allowed me to use the focus hand unit so I can be off the camera so I won't have any shaking. And this is inherently something you would use for any uh, type of crash zooms in real time, you would use a fizz unit. What I really like about this unit is that the motors are quite powerful and, and fine-tuned enough to adjust it very simply, very quickly. I was simply adding the A and B points. All right, so let me just show you how to do the A and B points real quick. It's super simple. You see your percentage here. So you say, let's, you know, you go here, you just press A, and that's your A, and then go to your next point, and that's your B, <laughs> just like that. And what's nice too, there is not a vibration, but there's definitely like a thunk to know that you hit your mark. So that's quite nice. And just to turn that off, you just press it. And now you have the full range of the focus. Again, you just press A, set your mark, go to the next one, press B. Simple as that. So this allowed me to focus up really quickly using power focal lenses which allowed me to nail the shot that I need by just making sure I was timing it right. And I can make my half turn or you know full turn, what have you, whatever was needed for me to land that shot. So now to answer the question, is this the best follow focus system out there? And I have to say, I actually left the best feature for last. What DJI has done is provided a new ecosystem with the new motors, the new focus system with the hand unit, but also the transmitter and receiver unit that it released not too long ago, as well as the monitor too. And then the LiDAR, this is actually a new LiDAR. It has a few new differences from the previous one, a wider field of view and some other new features um, that I'll list below. Um, and then that hardware piece that allows you to use it on third-party cameras. Now this opens the door for much more accessibility to get LiDAR on, on different camera systems with different lenses. And also you can have the same heads-up display that's featured in the Ronin 4D on your monitor with different cameras once you get it all set up. Now, I did not have time to actually do that, nor did I have the hardware to show that, but hopefully down the way, I can get my hands on um, some other accessories that I can actually do that because I think that's very exciting. The next best thing for you to get in order to have a system like this is the Teradek TOF-1 system. And that's a pretty pricey system, but that allows you to have the heads up display and everything else. So I'm gushing over it as a first AC. Now I have a little bit more accessibility and price range with this system here. Um, so once I get it all together, I'm definitely going to <laughs> have fun with this. But in the meantime, check out Media Division. I'm sure they did an extensive review on it. I just saw they have an hour review on this system. Definitely check that out. This was sort of a beginning setup how to video. Yeah, the better the, the things get better each year, don't it? Like. You can't complain about that, to be honest. There's certain things I can't complain, obviously, but something like this is very exciting. But anyway, I catch you guys on the next video. See you.